Usto, which used to be called AnyVision, are a facial recognition company. They're an Israeli AI startup. Their big sell is that they can use AI to automatically watch over people, watch their faces, flag them if they're on a watch list or of a security concern. And they claim to do this, you know, better, faster, more accurately than anyone else. They also claim to have privacy protections, such as saying that they won't, you know, store data. How much we can trust companies' claims about how they store people's information is, is another matter entirely. Usto have interest in large part because AnyVision made headlines back in 2019 when reports essentially said that they worked with the Israeli military to carry out surveillance on the West Bank. But following that, it emerged that Microsoft was an investor and Microsoft eventually pulled out of being an investor. We also don't know whether they pulled out because of ethical concerns. It's hard to say at the minute. It was last year as well that I found out that they were potentially working on technology to apply the facial recognition to drones as well. So in theory, you know, you could apply this super smart AI facial recognition and attach it to a drone and you could fly past, say, a ship or a bus stop and you could match faces there. So it's a company that's come to prominence in the government realm. But now, I think with the name change as well to Usto from AnyVision, it's now claiming to be much more focused on, on the private market. Casinos seem to be a big part of Usto's future. Casinos see a huge number of people coming in and out. So we wanted to go to Oklahoma and see what it looks like for a private company to have this powerful surveillance technology. We spoke with Travis Thompson, Director of Compliance at Muskogee Nation Gaming Enterprises, and here's what he had to say. Facial recognition is important to us from a lot of different perspectives, but the main one was really to kind of protect our players and enhance their uh, experience while they're inside the casino. We saw a major need to kind of dive into the facial recognition world because we were having a hard time recognizing faces just in person. So that, that responsibility was on our security guards, our floor personnel to actually go out and remember who these band patrons were, who these bad actors were, and try to see that in a sea of people every single day. We started working with Usto, and at that time it was called AnyVision, and we saw the detection rate just through the roof. And so even when we did a demo test with our local vendor, uh, we saw a lot of great success and we knew it had opportunities to expand on that within our resort. So when somebody comes into the property and they are banned and they are in the facial recognition system, we actually get an alert that's in our surveillance room. We radio down to the floor, usually to a security officer or an MOD, and they'll usually do an ID check on that person to verify that's who we have in the system. A lot of times we don't, you know, our, our bad actors have learned a little bit to not to bring their IDs. Well, if you don't have an ID in an Oklahoma casino, you have to go anyway. So they're going to be escorted off the property. Well, the concerns about facial recognition, I guess, are pretty basic. A large number of people would not want an image of their face to be stored in some database somewhere so that it could be used at some point further down the line for identifying you, maybe even incriminating you in a crime that, that, that you weren't part of. You know, the, the, these things are risks. And we've seen that in particular with facial recognition technologies that have led to wrongful arrests, in particular of, of black people. There's always been an issue around the ways in which these technologies identify black people compared to white people. In fact, any other ethnicity other than white people, these kinds of technologies have on occasion really struggled with, with identifying the right person. AnyVision claims to have data that indicates that it doesn't have this problem. Dean Nichols, CMO of Usto, gave us some more information. I think there is a lot of misconception around demographic bias, and I think a lot of that um, misconception was valid 10 years ago, when a lot of these AI and facial recognition systems were getting rolled out. And a lot of it had to do with how the AI was built. So for example, if you train your AI on a bunch of middle-aged white guys, it's going to be really good at picking up and detecting middle-aged white guys, but may not do so well with African-American women. Right? Those biases have um, been largely eliminated. And so if you look at all the leading players in facial recognition, they have virtually zero bias from, a, from an age or from an ethnicity perspective. Another area of concern is, what are you doing with my data? So virtually everyone that walks in the casino, the thousands and thousands of people that walk into this casino, we don't care about. We're not maintaining their information. It's only when they're on the watch list that we do that matching, and now we're preserving that footage. This is only used, at least in our opinion, for good. 
This is giving um, an opportunity for our customers to feel safe because all we are detecting are the people that we want to keep out of here. Working with local law enforcement, our tribal law enforcement, we have had situations where that facial recognition system was critical to making those fines here on this property and putting those people in jail. See the capture of the face when she turned around and see the green box it's making the detection. And as you can see, she had a mask on. And so she's trying to hide her identity for sure because we got a really high score um, that's got to be our person. So that's a positive. We don't use um, our system for our VIPs, and that's again part of the ethics. We had a small group that we tested with, but we have not rolled that out to our VIPs. Again, it's about that ethics and acknowledgement and them understanding that they're going to be used in a detection system. We want it to be a, a customer-friendly atmosphere, so we don't want them to feel uh, like Big Brother's watching them all the time, and that's not what our system is here and used for. Facial recognition as a category has evolved tremendously over the last 15, 20 years. And it's, it's allowed us to do real-time recognition of faces and body recognition, and eventually it'll be involve behavior recognition as well. Whether they're also able to just simply detect patterns of behavior amongst people, say someone is acting suspiciously. That's a really, you know, another controversial side of, of this kind of technology. That's emotion detection almost. It has worrying overtones of you know, pre-crime, things that have been a concern for, you know, sci-fi novelists before this technology actually now exists. We really don't know how, how good technology is at understanding human emotion. And for that to be the next way of detecting threats or detecting just how happy people are in, in a public space, I think, you know, that there's just the simple creep factor with that, right? I mean, do you want a machine deciding whether or not you're happy and then that translating into, you know, maybe a customer service rep coming up to you and, and offering you something. Maybe it's positive, but again, um, I think a lot of privacy advocates would have just serious, serious concerns around widespread implementation of this technology in, in really, really public spaces.